It has been a long wait of almost five years, and Tesla's electric semi-truck will finally be delivered to the first customer. The birth of the Tesla Semi worried many long-standing rivals, especially Mack, a 117-year truck manufacturer. As an emerging candidate, the Tesla Semi makes a fantastic impression with its acceleration of 0 to 60 in only 5 seconds. Um, it, it blows my mind, I think it'll blow yours. Starting with performance. However, Mack is also introducing the Mack Anthem truck as a highway monster that offers power that no other car can match. So will the Tesla Semi be able to defeat its formidable fuel-powered rival, the Mack Anthem? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome friends back to the channel. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now let's get started with today's episode. Tesla has revolutionized the global electric mobility movement with its quirky and efficient passenger vehicles. The Semi is not just any truck, it's a zero-emission freight-hauling cargo machine that trumps traditional oil guzzlers, like the Mac Anthem on all fronts, like performance, payload, speed, interior, technology, economy, and operational costs. But how can the Tesla Semi's electric motor be more powerful than that of the Mac Anthem? We also have uh, four independent uh, motors. On, so there's a, there's a motor on each of the rear wheels and an independent front, front suspension, so it's incredibly... Tesla modified some aspects of the prototype. Instead of four electric motors, the Semi will have three independent motors on the rear axles. Although horsepower and torque figures have not been released, the motors are said to be the same as those used in the Tesla Model 3 electric sedan. Independent dynamometer tests of the Model 3 motors found they produce up to 300 horsepower and 550 pound-feet of torque. Multiply by three and discount a little for the losses occurring when the motors are linked, and it's probably safe to expect the semi to deliver a minimum of nearly 900 horsepower and 1600 pound-feet of torque. In contrast, the Anthem is available with three Mack diesels, the MP7, 8, and MP8HE. The Mac MP7 is the base engine in the Anthem. It's a 659 cubic inches overhead cam turbocharged inline six cylinder diesel engine. Try saying that five times fast. It develops 325 to 425 horsepower and 1,260 to 1,560 pound feet of torque. Moreover, stepping up the 13-liter Mac MP8 for the 2023 Mac Anthem version gives drivers 505 horsepower and 1,860 pound-feet of torque. Mac Trucks said the Anthem is set to tackle all manner of transport applications, from vocational rigid rolls to B double highway haulers. However, we can see that Tesla's engine is more powerful than the latest Mac Anthem version at 395 horsepower. And with that said, is there any way that the Mac Anthem can surpass the acceleration of the Tesla Semi? And what exactly is the acceleration of these two trucks? We want a, a vehicle that feels incredible, that accelerates like nothing else. Without the payload, the Tesla Semi could accelerate like a mid-range sports car with a 0-60 to 60 time of just 5 seconds. With a full load, it's supposed to be capable of the same feat in only 20. Sure, that sounds slow compared to the average car these days, but it's three times faster than the Mac Anthem. The Mac Anthem can take longer than 60 seconds to reach that speed. In addition to a new hood and grille, Mac engineers redesigned the roof and chassis fairings, mirror covers, front bumper, and air dam to more easily cut through the wind, but still not as fast as the Tesla Semi. So, what is the reason that the Tesla Semi could accelerate so quickly? The Semi can generate better performance due to its special design. This truck has its nose blanked off while its chin houses a relatively small air intake to cool the battery, which sits between the front and rear axles. The Mac Anthem has a drag coefficient of 0.65 to 0.7. The Tesla Semi scores a .36, cutting the regular diesel truck drag in half and even beating the Bugatti Chiron score of .38. 
the Tesla Semi has a 0.36 drag coefficient. The way well, this is a really good number. Trucks are used to transport goods and tonnage, which is going to be crucial to their success. So which truck has the larger capacity? The automaker says that the Tesla Semi will be able to transport a payload at least as high as it would be for a Class 8 diesel truck. The Tesla Semi, fully loaded at 82,000 pounds, gross combination weight includes truck and trailer. For comparison, the Mac Anthem's total loaded weight can be up to 62,000 pounds and 80,000 pounds including all trailers. Thus, the Tesla Semi has a payload greater than 2,000 pounds, which equals 83 packs of Pepsi with each having 24 cans. Another very important aspect is the interior. What's the difference between the new truck manufacturer Tesla and the long-standing manufacturer Mac? The Tesla Semi interior is unique. The driver's seat is centrally positioned and Tesla says this allows for better overall visibility out of the windshield. Behind the driver's seat, there are two additional foldable seats. Tesla showed the cabin with dual 15-inch screens located on each side of the steering wheel. The display on the right appears to contain the traditional launcher we have in today's Tesla, with access to music, phone, cabin temperature, and more, while the left contains truck-specific features at the bottom, such as tire PSI, trailer air supply, and parking brake functions. Now moving over to the Mac Anthem, what's so special about its interior? The Mac's interior seems more traditional. The driver's seat is a custom ISRI job that is comfortable and supportive and offers heaps of adjustment. The flat bottom steering wheel is adjustable via a foot lever above the accelerator, so you can really set the truck up for a comfortable drive. And surprisingly, there is no large infotainment screen like in the Tesla Semi. The screen sits between the Speedo and the Taco and is known in Mac parlance as the Co-Pilot. It's a 5-inch color screen that offers truck info including pre-trip light inspection, trip computer, fuel usage, and distance to empty, along with a host of other useful information. The instrument panel has been raised to be more in the driver's forward sight line, and the HVAC and shifter controls are now closer to the seats. If you're a sucker for the classics, the Mac Anthem is a good choice, contrary to the Tesla Semi, which will be more modern. Now, a dedicated space becomes even more important when truckers spend long hours on the road, giving them a spot to rest or at least disengage from a bit to recharge. That's why most trailer trucks now come with a sleeper cab. How will the sleeping areas or the sleeper cab of the Tesla Semi and Mac Anthem be designed? Videos and pictures have failed to reveal the sleeper cab portion of the Tesla Semi. However, the Semi can drive for long periods without stopping. So there is a need for a sleeper. There is a significant amount of room behind the cockpit to house a sleeping area in a black box above the second cabin. Whereas in contrast, the Anthem has been operated on the road, so we can see this truck is available in several configurations, including a day cab, a 48-inch flat top sleeper, and a 70-inch stand-up sleeper. Inside, the new driving and sleeping environments put the emphasis on increasing driver comfort and productivity. The cab features 1.8 meters of headroom in the cockpit and 2.1 meters of headroom in the sleeper compartment. The extra overhead space allows for additional storage in the driver's compartment. While in the bunk above the standard inner spring mattress, sturdy overhead storage cupboards are featured. LED courtesy lighting, 12 volt power outlets, and USB charging ports are also featured in the new sleeper cab. There's also the option of a slide out under bunk fridge. Exterior locker boxes can also be accessed from the inside of the truck by lifting the bed. Which truck would be safer? Another area where the Tesla Semi will break significant ground is safety. The Semi comes with the same safety features as Tesla's existing vehicles, the same kind of standards that have earned Tesla countless accolades. The Semi has enhanced autopilot, automatic emergency braking, automatic lane keeping, and forward collision warning. If the Tesla Semi senses no driver input, it will stay in the lane, come to a slow and gradual halt, and automatically dial an emergency number. 
there's an enhanced traction control system on the semi to prevent jackknifing. Jackknifing refers to the unusual folding of highly articulated vehicles like trailers because of uncontrolled inertia. It occurs when the heavy trailers cause the truck to contort into awkward angles, often causing accidents. Tesla's engineers have incorporated an advanced traction control system where jackknifing is wholly avoided. For comparison, the Mac Anthem uses Bendix Wingman Fusion, a camera and radar-based system that provides collision mitigation, adaptive cruise control, and lane departure warning capabilities, and Mac Road Stability Advantage by Bendix, a fully electronic stability control system to help mitigate the chances of a rollover or jackknife incident, is also specced on the Anthem model used in both programs. These systems are standard on all Mac Anthem models. What's more, Musk claimed that the semi would require no brake pad changes ever. Brake energy regeneration, which recovers kinetic energy and stores it in an electrical form in the battery, naturally slows the vehicle down. Compared to the Mac Anthem, it's not a difficult truck to drive. In fact, it's dead simple. However, you can take more control if and when you need to and drive it like a manual or take full advantage of the Mac PowerLeash engine brake. The PowerLeash is a three-stage engine brake that, when used in conjunction with the cruise, can keep you from overspeeding on the downhills and can also provide engine braking for slowing down through towns and the like. A simple tap on the service brakes with the engine brake on full will begin the slowing process using the engine brake and automatic downshifts. Both trucks have their own systems, suitable for each type of vehicle, but it seems that the Tesla Semi is always at the forefront of technology, so it is claimed that the Semi is the safest, most comfortable truck ever. Which one is a better investment? The Tesla Semi prices have been announced, and they are very competitive. A Tesla Semi starts at $150,000 for the 300-mile range model. Tesla also offers a higher range version of the Semi for $180,000, which has a range of 500. The recently passed Inflation Reduction Act includes a $40,000 tax credit for the purchase of heavy electric vehicles. So the price of a Tesla Semi would only range from about 110,000 to 140,000. The Mac Anthem is a versatile truck with day cab and sleeper options. Day cab models can start around 100,000 and sleeper models typically start around 140,000. For more comparison, the price of a Freightliner Cascadia, one of the most popular semis on the road right now, is anywhere between $130,000 to $160,000, so Tesla appears to be within a typical industry standard price range. In the long run, Tesla says that diesel trucks are 20% more expensive in terms of operational costs. To complete a 200-mile journey, the electric truck would just need a fraction of the budget of its counterpart. Specifically, the vehicle with an internal combustion engine would require about 34 gallons of diesel, which is almost 127 liters, to cover the journey. On average, it would cover about 5.9 miles per gallon, and taking into account the price of a gallon of diesel on highways is currently four, oh my god, is currently $4.99. According to the United States Energy Information Administration, the math would result in a cost of $169.76 in fuel to complete the 200-mile journey. When we analyzed the case of the Tesla Semi, we took as a reference the consumption of less than 2 kilowatt hours per mile, announced by the manufacturer, and for practical purposes, rounded it up to 2 full kilowatt hours. Thus, covering the 200 miles of the route would require the use of 400 kilowatt hours, which multiplied by a price of 7 cents per kilowatt hour would result in an expense of only $28 to cover the journey. And according to the calculation then, the Tesla Semi could cover the journey of just 16 and a half percent of the money that a diesel truck would use. Without a doubt, that is quite insane. So how are the deliveries of the Tesla Semi going? Now, after five years, Tesla is gearing up to deliver the first Semi to customers on the first day of December. It's doing so by hosting a delivery event at its Giga Nevada factory, which is producing the first batch of Tesla Semi trucks. The company announced this through its official Twitter account. The post showcases the front of a Tesla Semi with its headlights on, with the image also showcasing the center seating arrangement. 
which is different from that of many other semi-trucks in the industry. The seat also showcases a red seatbelt, which is Tesla's main brand color. The Tesla CEO will also be dragging himself away from his Twitter duties and attending the event and doing the handover to the first customer. Musk confirmed this in the third quarter earnings call last month. We'll be handing over our first production Tesla semis to Pepsi on December 1st. I'll be there in person. This is an exciting chapter for Tesla as they enter another market segment dominated by traditional manufacturers. Though Tesla does not have the first mover advantage this time, because many traditional trucking companies are already building long-range heavy-duty trucks as well as a large number of electric vans and smaller trucks, the Tesla Semi will be able to change the market, creating a lot of attention and significant revenue sources for Tesla. How do you feel about the confrontation between the Mac and the Tesla Semi? Which beast do you feel is the superior one? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and for all of your support of our channel. As always, if you enjoyed our video, please leave us a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell to stay up to date on exciting developments in the world of EVs and green technology. Once again, thank you so much, and we hope to see you again soon. Until then, take care and be safe.